This key concept video looks at Venn diagrams. It's one of two Venn diagram videos. This one looks at their creation and some probability questions. And I'm going to give this overview using an example, and we're going to then create the Venn diagram. And I'll also go through some example questions that are very common in IB Maths uh, Studies exam papers. So in this example here, we have 100 people are surveyed on if they watch basketball and or soccer. And the responses were that 50 said basketball, 60 said soccer, and 20 said both. So in here, for this survey, we have two different options, and we're going to call these sets, basketball and soccer. Now this over here is a two-set Venn diagram. Sometimes you also see three sets that look like this. However, this here has two sets. We'll call this the basketball set, so this outside circle here. And this right-hand set we'll call the soccer set, this right-hand circle here. And a Venn diagram is just a way to represent data visually. I mean, this here, this does represent the data. However, a Venn diagram uh, displays it in a nice, easy-to-read, descriptive manner. Now, there's a key point for Venn diagrams. When we go to uh, put on our numbers, it's very important to work from the inside out and you'll understand that in a second. So let's have a look at my information here. I'm going to start from the inside out, which is the people that play both basketball and soccer. This part here is called the intersection of B and S, and we are told that 20 said both. So 20 people watch both basketball and soccer. That's what this 20 here represents. Now, this is why starting from the inside out is very important. Let's have a look at now the top piece of information. 70 said basketball, uh, sorry, 50. If I put 50 here and I have a look at the basketball set, how many people are inside the basketball set? 50 plus 20, it's actually 70. So 50 here is not actually correct. I need to think, okay, what number can I put here such that this number plus 20 equals my 50? which is how many people said basketball. If I put 30 here, 30 plus 20 is 50, 50 people are inside the basketball set, 50 people said basketball, so that is now correct. That's why it's very important. If I, if I started at the top line and said 50 said basketball, I wouldn't know where to put my 50. Do I put it here? Do I put it here? Do I split it 50-50 and put 25-25? I'm not sure. That's why it's very important to start from the inside out. So we had 20 here and we had 30 here. Now let's have a look at the last piece of information. 60 said soccer. Again, I need to think what number plus 20 will equal 60. And we could set up an equation for that. We, this is a pretty basic one, but you could say, well, 20 plus X equals 60 and then solve for X. So X equals 60, take 20. X is equal to 40. However, this is a pretty simple one. We can probably do this one in our head. Something plus 20 equals 60. That something is 40. Now, we're not quite finished yet because there is one area on the Venn diagram that has not been completed. That is the people that watch neither basketball or soccer. They might prefer tennis or they might prefer movies or TV shows instead. So we need to think, well, 100 people were surveyed. How many have I captured so far? 40 plus 20 is 60 plus 30 is 90. So there are 10 people, and we put it just outside of the sets, but inside the whole outer rectangle, which represents all the people surveyed. So we put the 10 just here. So there we go. We have created our Venn diagram, and this here visually shows the results of the survey. So you can very quickly say, well, 10 people didn't watch any, 40 just watched soccer, 20 watched both, 30 just watched basketball. So that's the creation. Now I'm going to go through some of the common questions. Uh, a very common one will be little n of, say, the basketball set, which means how many people watch basketball. So we can go, okay, here's the basketball set here. How many people are inside the basketball set? 50. So n just means how many elements. That's what that means. Uh, another co common question would be, what's the probability of a randomly chosen person out of this survey watches ten, uh, sorry, soccer. Well, let's draw a circle around the circle, uh, the soccer set. How many people are inside the soccer set? 40 plus 20 is equal to 60. 
And then because it's a probability, we divide it by how many people were surveyed. And that is 100, and that is equal to uh, 6 on 10, which is 3 on 5. And then another common type of question, very, very common, is a conditional probability question that may read, what is the probability of someone who watches soccer given that they watch basketball? That's what this line here means, given. Now this is a conditional probability question and there is a conditional probability formula. However, we don't really need to use that formula because we can just read it straight off the Venn diagram. This asks, how many people watch soccer given that they watch basketball? So we're only interested in the basketball set. We're, now, we're no longer interested in this or this. We're only interested in these 50 people here. Now how many of those 50 watch soccer? 20. How many people are the total, it's not 100, we're only interested in this 50, so it's going to be 20 on 50, and that is two-fifths. And these are probabilities. So there's some examples there of some of the types of probability questions that you'll see. I recommend now going and practicing some questions in the question bank section.